Yesterday, the Supreme Court blocked a Louisiana, Louisiana law from going into effect that would have eliminated most of the very few number of doctors that are permitted in the state to administer abortions. They would have been down to just one after this. The vote was five to four, and Chief Justice John Roberts joined liberals on the court. To stop that law from going into effect. Now, this is not the end of the legal process for that law. This is just one step along the way. But it is interesting for a couple of reasons. The first is that John Roberts did join the libs on the court. The other is that you had Clarence Thomas, Alito, Gorsuch, and Kavanaugh against it. They would have denied the stay, they would have let the law go into effect. Only Kavanaugh published a dissent. Oh, now man. he tried to he tried to be a little bit nuanced in it. But remember, of the concerns we had about Kavanaugh, um, the biggest ones were probably that, that it sure seemed like he was harassing and assaulting women. Um, but beyond that and his drinking issues um, and the fact that he apparently is gonna enter the court in the most partisan fashion that I've ever seen. He also, we worry, wants to overturn Roe v. Wade. Yes. And now we have this and he not only votes to allow this bill that, that it doesn't seem like based on Supreme Court precedent, we'll go into that, uh, should have been allowed in the first place, um, but writes the dissent for it. And women's issues in general, the fact that he chose to write a dissent about this. Okay, you're on the court already, do whatever you want, man. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that seems to be a questionable decision. And also what's disturbing is that women's rights and reproductive health hinges on the opinions of Chief Justice Roberts, who is not a liberal, he's not even close mm -hmm. to one, he's a conservative. But since Kennedy's departure, he has become the swing vote, and he's already blocked a variety of measures which would uh, were trying to limit reproductive rights. So uh, we're hanging by a thread based on John Roberts. Yeah. Yay. Exactly, and th this could be a preview of what's gonna happen in the future. Um, I, I will promise that I will only do this about 100 times more, but when I'm looking at those who voted against it, Thomas, Alito, Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, uh, that's four, could have been two. Could have been two. Could have been two if Donald Trump wasn't president. So I mean, we, we like to point out good news when it happens. We're really excited about some politicians. We think we're gonna have a really raucous, productive primary process. But even if that happens, and even if we get the exact candidate we want, and even if that candidate goes on to win the presidency in 2020, they will be facing an incredibly hostile, durable conservative majority in the Supreme Court that never should have gotten there and wouldn't have if Donald Trump hadn't become president. But she was a shill. That's true, okay. she was. Um, by the way, oh, I want to go over just one more second because Kavanaugh is not the only one I'm pissed at. I'm pissed at Susan Collins too. Uh, you might recall her saying this in her big speech uh, explaining why she was going to support Kavanaugh. She said, there has also been considerable focus on the future of abortion rights based on the concern that Judge Kavanaugh would seek to overturn Roe v. Wade. Protecting this right is important to me. To my knowledge, Judge Kavanaugh is the first Supreme Court nominee to express the view that precedent is not merely a practice and tradition, but rooted in Article 3 of our Constitution itself. He believes that precedent is not just a judicial policy, it is constitutionally dictated to pay attention and pay heed to rules of precedent. In other words, precedent isn't a goal or an aspiration, it is a constitutional tenet that has to be followed except in the most extraordinary circumstances. BS. BS, and you know what, Susan Collins, we found those extraordinary circumstances. We must have, because he would have allowed this law to go into effect even though it is virtually identical to a law that was struck down by the Supreme Court in Whole Woman's Health versus Hellerstedt just two years ago. Yeah. So precedent important for the first 12 to 16 months. And he, After that, he not overturned so much. precedent as an appeals judge. It is so, so sanctimonious and annoying. Like every Supreme Court nominee, they all say that they are believers in precedent. Mm -hmm. They're all political actors. It doesn't matter anymore. We are not living in the 1700s where they don't have access to the news and cable news and they see what's going on in the political sphere, they act accordingly, stop pretending otherwise. It's insulting to our intelligence. Exactly, and uh, get Susan Collins out of there if we can, America. Thank you very much for watching this clip from The Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.